So all these um, uh, exchanges are going on. So the boys eat, they, they wash their mouths, they take some you know, digestive spices, and, and then they all go to lie down in the garden, they're just like nice cottages, jeweled cottages in the garden, and they go there to lie down on their left side for a little bit. <laughs> and, um, and in the meantime, all the gopis, they finish cooking, and you know, Krishna and the camera boys finish eating. They run to the other room where they know there's a window that looks out over the garden. And they're just all peering out the window, you know, to see Krishna and kind of relaxing there with his friends. And they're all just like, oh, Krishna's so beautiful and so sweet and all that. And um, Radharani looking at Krishna, lying down there like that, then she becomes, uh, you know, her love increases another increment, increment and she starts perspiring. So then it's an ecstatic symptom and then she just starts perspiring profusely. And at that moment, Mother Yashoda walks in and she's like, Oh, Radha Rani, you're, you're perspiring so much. You've been working so hard over that hot stove for all this time. You know, please sit down. You must be exhausted. So she thinks it's because of, you know, fatigue from cooking that Radha Rani is perspiring. So she, sits, she sits Radha Rani down and she sits all the gopis around her. And, um, and then she goes to the kitchen and she personally um, feeds Radharani and the gopis. She makes sure that uh, she has another house servant whose name is Vinishta, who goes and gets all of Krishna's remnants and she mixes those remnants into whatever you know is in the pots and then that gets served out to um, Radharani and all the gopis. And uh, you know, Mother Yashoda, she, um, she tells Radharani while she's feeding her, she says, you know, Radha, I love you just as much as my own son. I love all of you girls just as much as my own son. And, um, and then she, calls the, and she tells the Nishta to go and get this um, jewelry box. So the Nishta knows the jewelry box that she's talking about. It's not an ordinary jewelry box, but it's all the jewelry that Mali showed has been saving. All the kind of like family heirloom things and you know, like very special, unique ornaments that Yashoda is saving up uh, for Krishna's wedding. <laughs> that those will be the ornaments that will be worn by the bride. <laughs> and she brings, so the Nishta brings the box, and Yashoda is just sitting there ecstatically uh, taking those ornaments and decorating Radharani with the ornaments. And Radharani is just like, oh my god. <laughs> but Yashoda, she's, um, she, um, she really wants Radha to marry Krishna. <laughs> she can't help herself. So in this way we see that um, rather, uh, Mother Yashoda is facilitating all the rasas. She's, she's, uh, she's insisting that the gopis come and cook for Krishna <clears throat> uh, in order to increase their uh, madhurya rasa, or their conjugal mood, so that they can be with the person that they love and they can serve him in a way that a wife serves, serves a husband and they can feel, have just the perfection of all of their transcendental desires to serve Krishna. Right in Krishna's own home. How else would they ever get to enter Krishna? By the, only by the mercy of Madhya Yashoda. And every single day. Actually twice a day. They come again later and make sweets for him in the afternoon. So, and then she also facilitates the sakuras because of those servants who are dressing, bathing, massaging, perfuming, styling the hair, putting on makeup. She's, um, she's engaging all of them and she's guiding all of them in how to um, serve Krishna in dasiras as, as servants um, in ways that, in, in a way that gives the most pleasure to Krishna. And then she's also facilitating the sakiras or the fraternal friendship, the mood of friendship of the coward boys by making sure that they also come over and eat with Krishna so that they can play together and joke together and um, you know just have a great time and Krishna can also, and Krishna relishes all these exchanges so she does it for the pleasure of Krishna and also for the pleasure of all the devotees of Krishna so this is something that you know as devotees this is what we are meant to do is that we don't only serve Krishna but we serve the devotees of Krishna by bringing the devotees to Krishna because Krishna likes to be with the devotees <laughs> so you can't serve Krishna without serving the devotees and the way that you serve devotees is bringing them to Krishna and that's how to please Krishna is by bringing the devotees to Krishna.
So that's what we're trying to do, right? Because every soul, every living being is eternally a servant of Krishna. We're all eternally devotees of Krishna. So, uh, you know, one way that we can uh, be uh, like Mother Yashoda is to do everything that we can to bring people to Krishna, to bring new people to Krishna, to uh, facilitate others' service for Krishna, to train, to guide, to appreciate, and also to um, care for. Uh, you see how Mother Yashoda, she doesn't just say, okay, you're here, go cook. You know, she, she makes sure that they eat before they go to do service. She makes sure afterwards that they, you know, eat again, that they get Krishna's remnants. She actually, you know, uh, tells one of the gopis to massage uh, right on his feet because she's been standing so long. So there's this mood of um, engagement, but also affection and care and sensitivity, and just trying to be the person who facilitates the perfection of each soul's desire to um, connect with Krishna. So this is transcendental motherhood. Madhya Shoda says the perfect example of transcendental motherhood, that a mother is a well-wisher in all respects, to everyone. And uh, of course, a Krishna conscious mother knows that the highest benefit is to uh, be connected to Krishna. So, um, and this applies not only to women with children who are mothers, uh, but it applies to everyone, uh, not only women, but also men. Because um, Srila Prabhupada said that uh, Krishna is the father, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that I am the seed-giving father. And the Prabhupada said, there's another place where Prabhupada says that Krishna is the father and also the mother. Because Krishna is the source of everything. And we are all parts and parcels of Krishna, so um, it doesn't matter what kind of body that we're in during this short lifetime, but we are parts and parcels of Krishna. And so Krishna has all the qualities in, in a perfect balance. And so we as parts and parcels of Krishna, we, regardless of what our temporary body is at the moment, we also have those qualities of Krishna, at least the first 50 qualities of Krishna, in balance. So, um, you know, all of us have this motherly quality. And Srila Prabhupada told his uh, leaders at one point, he said that, um, and many of them were sannyasis, I think everyone in the room was male, and he said that we should spread Krishna consciousness enthusiastically with the courage of an Englishman and with the heart of a the holy mother. <laughs> so he was saying that to his leading men that you need to preach with the heart of a Bengali mother. So what is the, what is it? What is what how would you describe the heart of a Bengali mother and how to spread Krishna consciousness with that mood? Who here is Bengali? Adi Kumaru, are you Bengali? Describe for us the heart of a Bengali mother, an ideal one at least. <laughs> Selflessly, you know, caring and loving the person without expectations. I mean, mothers are always serving, and they don't really expect much from the kids. I mean, how much can right. a young kid like? Give yeah, back? so just selfless yeah. service. Even it's not like a business exchange, right? It's like this person is here, and I'm just so happy that they're here, and I just want to serve them and care for them, make sure that they have everything that they need to be happy, and you know, whether they make a mess or you know, scream in the middle of 
a situation where screaming is just not <laughs> appropriate. Um, it's fine, you know, it's all good. I still, I'm not going to throw them out, you know. <laughs> I still accept them and love them and care them. What else? What are some other? Yeah, over there. I was thinking of uh, doing the needful. The mother, when the child is like, I don't know, the child gets like lost in Walmart or something, they're never like, oh, this isn't on my like, this isn't on my job description as a mother. It's <laughs> <laughs> like they do what has to be done. Because, yeah. yeah, so sometimes like the mother has to, you know, do the basic one of the things, but also whatever comes up, you know, the mother just rolls up the sleeves and fills in the boots and gets the job done. Good. Yeah. Uh, wanting to engage all aspects of their child's like, creativity or whatever their inclination is, whatever's going to make them happy, engaging that in service and personal development. And mm, yeah. Good. So the, the, par the mothers, the parents, they, they want to, they want the child to to grow and to develop and to really like. Um, they found a spark of whatever talents they have. They see they have some little musical ability. Oh, you should take music classes. Or they like to build things with Legos. You should, you know, be an engineer. Or you know, they, they like to they, they, they write in a journal or something. Oh, you should write more. You should write a book. You should write poetry. They just want the kids. They just want them to be wonderful in every way that they can possibly be wonderful. Yeah. Great day. I was thinking that a mother knows a child, like, um, who showed you Krishna's heart to invite the friends over all the things he likes. And then, um, so getting to know somebody to that level to where you can try to understand their heart, what they like, what they're into, mm -hmm. and then just show up in those ways. Like that. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, because everybody is ultimately an individual. And so the way that we interact with, the way that we try to nourish um, one individual, is going to be different from the way that we, um, you know, provide and care for another one. So, one, taking the time to get to know people in a very personal, individual way, and two, having the flexibility to be able to accommodate and respond to their needs in, in an inspiring way. Um, Stephen, did you, have, was that, did you have your hand up for yourself or for everything? Okay, go for it. Um, my mother is protective uh, of the child. Protects them from harm. Mm -hmm. um, always tries to steer them in the right direction and keep them out of harm's way. Good, yeah. So children need to be protected. And new devotees also need to be protected. Right? Because there's all, all kinds of dangers. You know, Maya is very strong and she'll do everything she can to stop someone being a devotee or to derail them after they've started on the path of Krishna consciousness. So you know, to protect new devotees, especially from bad association, from deviant philosophies, from Yes, okay. Christina? The mother is the first guru. So uh, for a kid, the world doesn't make sense a lot of times. They ask the mother, oh, what is this? Uh, what, you know, what is this supposed to be? Or what am I supposed to do? And the mother gives them information. Good, yeah. So when people come for, first come to Krishna consciousness, there are a lot of things that are very bewildering. <laughs> right? Like, why do you lie down on the floor like that? In front of the statue? And, um, you know, <laughs> why do you, um, just everything, like, how do you eat that? Um, and what is that that you're eating? And just, there's so many just weird cultural things that need some interpretation, right? So then, you know, the motherly thing is to explain everything. What is this? Why, like, children, they ask why, all the why questions, right? Why do you do that? Why do you offer a lamp? What's with the incense? Why do you? So to ex answer all the why questions. Good. Yes, the Adhikartu.
until you would notice that, you know, I will keep doing it for your protection. And I was thinking uh, that, that mother, you know, she, uh, having a hospital mother means taking a therapy. Um, it's, a, it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we have people in your system, we give them a to really take a lot of labor of love uh, on their part, and we don't necessarily go and tell them about it. <laughs> we right. do it out of love and care. And then, you know, one day I'm going to get a cup of it. <laughs> yeah. But I get a cup of it, and she's a good mother. Nice, yeah. Okay, I said one more, but me kind of says, okay, come on. I was just reflecting that like mothers they are very, very emotionally invested. Like in the children and they're always checking in. Like my mother's everyday question is, what did you eat today? <laughs> <laughs> and here like all like I can tell her is bread and soup because we have varieties of bread and varieties of soup. But she always has to ask that question. And I was just thinking that having preaching with the heart of mother means that we're not treating like the people we're bringing, we're not treating them as like we are HR personnel and they're just like our employees, like we just brought them in and push them yeah. to take care. But we're very much like invested and always like checking in with the people. And I like that the devotees like Govinda and Janaki at Krishna House. They're always checking in with the people and they're really caring for them. And it's like their heart is also invested in them. Mm. If they, the person goes away, they feel that pain. And if they come with closer to Krishna, they feel that like joy and happiness. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, that's good. We see this also at Srila Prabhupada. I mean, he, was, he very much had a motherly mood uh, in dealing with his disciples. And um, there's one pastime that happened right here uh, in Udravavan. Is Mother Loka here? There was, it was Janmashtami, and there was a pandal up on the hill at Mahudavan. And um, I guess it was a chilly night, and Srila Prabhupada was speaking. And then he noticed that uh, Mother Goku was sitting there and she, did, she just had, you know, short sleeves and everybody else had a sweater or chadavid or something. And she was kind of like, you know, looking uh, cold and it was cold and Srila Prabhupada noticed and, and uh, does anyone know exactly what Prabhupada said? I don't want to mess it up. But he was concerned, he expressed concern that she, you know, that it was cold and she wasn't properly dressed. And uh, I think he mentioned to Kulaji Prabhu, who was the temple bus. Oh, yeah? Sugawa, would you like to? He said, you have no cloth, and then he addressed Kulaji. These women need to have enough mixed cloth to them every month, make sure they have enough warm clothes. Check in with them every month to make sure that they have everything that they need, because they, they won't ask. Would you like to ask them? Yeah, he said, he said that. They are, they are trying. They, they are trying. They will ask you. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you ask them, are you okay? Do you have anything you need? And yeah. Like, not just to a family, but communicate to a family. Yeah. So this is a very motherly thing, you know, to be concerned. Are you warm enough, right? How many times when you're going to school or something when you're a kid, your mother's like, put on your jacket, put on your hat, it's cold out there, right? So, and then making sure, and then checking in to make, there's another uh, story, I think this was somewhere in India, and uh, Yamuna Devi was very sick, and um, the living conditions at that time were, were very austere, you know, there were a lot of ladies in a small place, it was not, the room wasn't even properly done, and, and uh, she needed to take rest, but it was impossible to rest in that room, and so Srila Prabhupada actually moved her into his, uh, part of his uh, quarters, you know, closet or something, and she was staying there, and uh, he gave her a bed, and, and um, and he would check on her. Like he would personally, you know, come a few times a day to ask her how she was feeling, whether she had eaten something, she needed some tea, or whether medicine was being given, like that. And he was he was very like, caring like that and motherly. So you know, the Prabhupada, he said that mood. He was the acharya, and uh, so that's the mood that we want. And that's the Prabhupada created this family mood. In the very early days of Islam, Sadat was always talking about how the, there was a family mood. It was like brothers and sisters serving together side by side uh, without any excessive tension, with no animosity. You know, it's just family working together. And um, I 
mean, unfortunately, after Shri Prabhupada's departure, then uh, the, there, there was, you know, due to a, a misunderstanding of what renunciation actually meant, there was an overemphasis on, you know, Bhagavatari and sannyasi, uh, sannyas ashram. And as a result, women were kind of viewed as problematic and they were undervalued. And that continued for decades, you know, where women were somewhat um, marginalized. And because women were not valued, the qualities that are generally, you know, associated with womanhood or with motherhood were also undervalued. And so even men, uh, you know, came to repress the natural caring qualities, sensitivity and, you know, affection and, you know, focus on, you know, the person. And so, you know, everything just became a little um, out, of, out of balance, became quite unhealthy, you know? And so, you know, we ended up with, you know, we acquired properties, we collected money, we built beautiful temples, we distributed lots of books and like that, but uh, so many devotees left in the process because they weren't cared for. They didn't get the affection and the personal care and the love and, and the protection that they needed. Um, so, you know, without the motherly mood, we can have an institution. But, you know, institutions are, you know, about, you know, positions and job descriptions and salaries and policies. And all those things are necessary. Uh, but we don't want to just have an institution. We want to have a family. So, uh, without a mother, where is the question of family? So we need to bring back this motherly mood. Not only women, but also the men. You know, that everybody, let that motherly side come out. And let's treat everyone in all the ways that you are all describing so nicely. And, um, and just see how the movement's going to grow. And like a mother gives, your mother may have many children, but she'll give attention according to the needs. So it's usually like this small baby in arms gives the most attention. So in the Krishna house, we, we have this um, uh, culture of giving the most attention, focusing on the newest devotees and really catering to their needs, just like a mother caters to the needs of the smallest child the most because they're, they're more dependent. And, um, you know, it's, it's very difficult as many of you are experiencing trying to open new Krishna houses, going out there and trying to make new devotees. It's very difficult to make new devotees. Uh, but even more difficult than making new devotees is keeping the ones that you have. And one time Mahatma Prabhu was speaking uh, to all the teachers at Sri Mayapur International School and he was saying, oh, I'll wrap it up. He was saying that, um, you know, he was talking to many devotees about uh, why they stay in his con through over so many years, despite all the ups and downs. And pretty much unanimously, it, it, the, person, the person was able to name someone. I stayed because of this person. Because this person cared about me. Because this person listened to me. Because this person uh, helped me through my struggles. And he said it, it, it wasn't the philosophy. It wasn't, uh, you know, the, even the prasad. <laughs> it, wasn't the, it, wasn't, it wasn't the philosophy, it wasn't the chanting, it wasn't even the prasad, but it was the fact that there was one person, at least one person in their lives that genuinely, deeply, personally cared about them. And that's the motherly mood. So that's what keeps people in Krishna consciousness. So um, we all need to be mothers in, in this sense. And, um, you know, in Islam, we say that everyone is a prabhu. But I would like to say that everyone is also a Mataji. <laughs> so whatever body you have, whatever service you have, um, do it with the courage of a Prabhu and with the heart of a Mataji. <laughs>
Will you show us? You can meditate on her transcendental qualities, how she facilitated everyone's service, how she brought everyone closer to Krishna, how she healed for them all while they were doing their services. And uh, if we do the same in relation to every single devotee in our movement that we come in contact with, then everyone's going to feel accepted and nourished and supported and loved. And the result will be that Krishna is pleased and he showers all of us with blessings. So I'll end there. So, oh. Do we have time for questions? Maybe a couple. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. <laughs> <laughs> Sadhu. <laughs> Sadhu. <laughs>